So I started in St David's Hospital in 1989. Um, initially, it was a work experience placement from school um, for a couple of weeks. Um, and that was in the occupational therapy department. Um, and after that week, couple of weeks, I then volunteered as well um, for about a year, year and a half through to when I started doing my A-levels. Um, and then um, in 1992, following my experience of that, um, I then went off and trained as an occupational therapist as well. Um, my other connection is that my grandmother also worked in St David's Hospital as an enrolled nurse. Um, so my interest was really from the stories that she used to tell me as a child as well um, of St David's Hospital and, and the community there. So that's my initial, my initial uh, experience of St David's Hospital. Some of the, the main memories are obviously of being in the occupational therapy department. Um, so we used to do a lot of different activities there, um, from art to music um, and gardening, lots of different things. But also at the time, very early on in those kind of 80, 89, 1990, there was still um, quite a big focus on industrial therapy at the time. So the patients used to come and do um, work like stamping prescription pads and um, packing supply bags, um, quite repetitive work. Some of the other memories, I guess, are of we used to, as an occupational therapy department, used to take the patients on lots of outings. Um, so we used to have um, the, the minibus and we'd go round each of the wards to collect people in the morning. And then we might go off to Llanstefan or Larne um, or lots of different places, really. Um, and then I can remember every year it was an annual trip to the United County show as well. So I've got lots of memories of um, taking a group of patients to the to the show. Um, I've also got lots of really good memories of the um, the staff that I worked with. Um, I was obviously very young at that point, so I was volunteering, but I learned an awful lot from the way, particularly in occupational therapy, where the focus is around encouraging people to do as much as they can for themselves in an institution and an environment where everything was pretty much done for everybody as inpatients. Um, so I, I was very motivated by that because I could see the potential in the, the patients, the people that I met, that they, they could do so much more for themselves if, if encouraged to do that. Um, and they were a really great team of occupational therapy staff who wasn't always easy to, to get the, the staff on the wards to kind of buy into helping people to do as much as they could for each other. So, so they're they're probably some of my, my main memories. Um, other memories are things like the, the carol service in the church in the St David's site every year. Um, and that was always, the church was packed really with staff and patients um, and a really nice community feel, getting everybody together, lots of singing and readings. Um, and the other memories really are the things like the um, the clothing shop that's that kind of had everything, not just clothes. Um, and the the patients could go and get anything that that they needed from there. And the the what was then the patients' canteen that was next door as well. Um, so I suppose in those early years, there was still a lot of activity on site in my, in my early experience. I then went off and did my occupational therapy training um, and used to come back and, and visit because I was working in, in Cardiff and the, and the Rhondda Valleys at that point. Um, but coming back and a lot of that over a period of time, the community feel went in the same way as it was 
probably in the early years that I worked there. Um, things like the shop closed, the canteen closed, um, and there were there were less wards, so there was less kind of activity going on in terms of occupational therapy as well. So that kind of changed over over the years as well. It was very different being an occupational therapist in the early years because the focus was still very much on the patients doing some work and having to do the activity whereas over the years it was more about people wanting and being motivated to be part of something um, encouraging both staff and patients to engage in in that was a challenge um, in terms of the patients being very institutionalized to the way that their routines were at that time in a number of the wards where people had lived there for, for quite a long time um, and really the, the, the way occupational therapy was provided changed quite a lot over those years, um, doing much more on the wards as opposed to taking people off the wards um, and much more focus on rehabilitation, um, whereas in the early years that there wasn't so much of a focus on that. So um, occupational therapy, I think, in in the whole journey of St David's Hospital has been a, a, a key one really when we move towards the, the hospital, the wards closing and people being resettled out of the hospital. Occupational therapy became a very big part of that in that journey in helping people to learn the skills um, that they needed. In terms of the numbers of patients, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't remember exactly the number but there certainly were a large number of wards still open um, when I started as a volunteer. Um, so um, it was before the services going out into the local areas. So all of the, the Pembrokeshire wards, the Llanelli wards, the Ceredigion wards, we had um, rehabilitation, uh, older adult long stay. There was the locked wards that were still there. So there was a lot of different wards when I first started. In latter years when I came back then obviously some of those wards moved out into the local areas so there was less but there was still a large number of patients on, on the hospital site when I first went to work in, in St David's Hospital. It was a very, very busy site. The main treatments I would say provided at the time when I started were very medical. So it was about medication um, and um, ECT, um, occupational therapy. There was very little, if anything, in the way of psychological therapies or um, any alternatives to kind of a medical model. I think other than that, I'm trying to think, because my grandmother used to tell me stories about... Um, uh, when they used to do deep insulin therapy, um, but that was way bef way before that had stopped when I when I started there. So I think in the main it was mainly nursing care, medical kind of medication, um, and ECT, um, and those were the main main things really. Other than occupation, that industrial therapy, as I said, um, the patients did come and do their kind of their work it was very much seen as they come to do the work i think at, in in the late late 80s early 90s it was very structured regimented i can certainly remember even as part as the part of the occupational therapy department that the routine would be the the hospital minibus would arrive at the occupational therapy department We'd get on the bus, we'd drive round each of the wards, pick people up, bring them to occupational therapy and then they'd do their uh, activities and then they'd go back in time for, for food. So it was very much a, a, a daily routine that was quite institutionalised really. You know, there, there wasn't much deviation from that other than if there happened to be a trip on a particular day or an outing or something that we were doing that was a bit different. But in the main, it was very much the same routine every day. As working as an occupational therapist, I think was, was 
a different relationship to working on a ward where you were caring for for the people as part of their that's where they lived for a lot of the people that was there certainly as an occupational therapy assistant working there was a lot more time to sit and engage and talk um, with people about their families um, what they liked to do what they didn't like to do the music they liked you got to engage with people when they were doing artwork or um, got to take people off off site as well so I think there were different opportunities to engage in a different way and have maybe conversations that as a as a nurse caring for the same person every day um, maybe that that didn't happen as much but um, I think you saw people in a different environment because they were off the ward as opposed to to caring for people on a ward in a ward environment what lessons can can be learned I think in a, in a positive way, um, I think one of the things about St David's Hospital um, that wasn't necessarily lost when services moved out into the community, but a really important part of it was a kind of sense of community. So I guess the lessons about any change from um, uh, a setting into a different way of delivering services, we've got to think about how we maintain a sense of community and support and networks where people can become more isolated um, outside of that. So I'm not, not saying that institution, being in an institution is, is a good thing, but there are elements of it that actually there was support, a lot of things wrapped around people. And sometimes we forget that we need to provide that in a different way when people are living in the community to make sure that they they get the same level of care and support and attention um, so I think in my job now whenever we think whenever I'm thinking about how we want to do something different deliver a different service or whatever it's thinking about what support networks there are around that in our communities um, to make sure that people aren't isolated I think relationships and engagement with people is really, really important, however that happens and wherever that happens. Um, and it and it's just reminding ourselves always that we need to think about the networks and the support structures around people, whether that's other service users or other community networks or lots of different, you know, there's lots of ways of doing that, aren't there? Um, we just need to be mindful that, that people do have those things. I think it's always important to learn the positive things as well as the things that weren't so good. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm sure as part of the project, you had lots of things about the, the negative side of living in an institution. But actually, for a lot of those people who lived there for a long time, um, that, w that was their support network. So it's, it, it's important to, to remember that, that people need different things. So always think about what what a support network means to an individual it might be different for me than it is for, for somebody else yeah I think in terms of the the environment and the St David's Hospital site I think because I was born in Carmarthen so I'm from Carmarthen my family are from Carmarthen and St David's Hospital was part of it, it was nothing it was it wasn't scary to me as a, as a young person growing up in Carmarthen it was part of Carmarthen really and as I said because my grandmother worked within the hospital for many many years as an enrolled nurse um, I have memories of a child of kind of um, going up into St David's Hospital to meet my grandmother from work for example um, so it was never something when I went back as a uh, work experience and volunteer that that was uh, I was afraid of or unsure of it was something that was quite kind of you know well that's the hospital um in terms of the the buildings working in occupational therapy what i would say is that the department moved around a lot um there was lots of stories where um i think in in the late 80s there was a really really bad storm one year and the roof blew off the uh, occupational therapy department, so it had to move. Um, so it always tended to be moved to somewhere that wasn't quite right for what we needed it for, but you kind of had to make do. So 
could have done with more space. It wasn't wasn't the best of environments. Um, but I can always remember the team always, you know, really just making the best of what we had so as we could make sure that that people could come to occupational therapy and come and do some really productive things. Um, I, the other thing I, I have always remember about in the minibus, I can't remember the name of the minibus driver, it will come to me, but uh, whenever anything had to happen to pick up a patient, is all the windy little roads. So the minibus would go down to one of the wards, stop, pick up, then back around, and you'd spend maybe half an hour to an hour on this little minibus going around all the different wards to pick up the patients from the different wards to come to occupational therapy. And I suppose I look back on that now and I think it would have been so much nicer maybe just to walk across. But you spent ages on this little bus going around picking up all the all the patients to come to occupational therapy. So I could, that's that's one thing that sticks in my mind. Um, the grounds were always very, very well kept, I have to say. The grounds people kept, the, wa the, the grounds always looked immaculate. Um, probably better than they do now for the services that are left there on the site. Um, but I suppose the, those are the main memories of the building and just how grand it looked really. I suppose as a child particularly, not really knowing the context of the patients and and uh, and the care that went on there. It's, it's a big imposing grand build of buildings, aren't they? So. In terms of the shop, there are probably many other people that can give you a lot more detail about the shop than I can. But my memories are about, in the main, um, having clothing available. Because, um, as, you, as you know, many of the patients who were in St David's at that time when, when I was working there had lived in St David's Hospital for many, many, many years. Some of whom didn't necessarily have family who visited or... Um, that they were in contact with. So the shop really was somewhere where um, if the patients needed um, clothing or um, toiletry supplies that they could they could go and get those things. Um, in terms of the money that's an interesting question because I'm I'm not aware that the patients had their own money to buy those things. Um, but there must have been some system where how how that happened in terms of the wards and, and the shop. But it was certainly the patients who would go to the shop um, if they needed something, an item of clothing or some toiletries. Um, but I'm sure there are lots of other people who know a lot more about how the, how the shop actually worked. Um, but those were the main items that I recall being there. The, ho the whole hospital was a smoking environment when, when I was working there and certainly in going on to the wards, um, patients could smoke on the wards as well. Um, uh, and I would say all the wards, there would be smoking. Um, from the point of view of working in the occupational therapy department, um, we did uh, encourage the patients to smoke outside of the department, but all of the wards were were smoking were smoking was permitted when I worked there. The industrial therapy um, was certainly a big focus when I first went to St David's Hospital, um, and it was seen very much as work that the patients would do, um, quite repetitive work. I think the occupational therapy, the other activities um, were quite limited initially, but they did they did grow and try to offer as much variety as possible. Um, and in the early days of occupational therapy, there was very, very few staff. You're talking only a, a very, very handful of staff. And that did grow then over the years. So you had more people who were then able to provide different things and work in different ways with people. Um, but certainly when I first went as a work experience, industrial therapy was quite a big, big part. In terms of occupational therapy, I think that it, it took quite a, quite a while for the, for the benefits and value, I think, to be um, understood by all. I think it, it was a cultural change over time as opposed to that there was a, a light bulb moment where all of a sudden everybody thought, oh, you know, it's great, we've got occupational therapy. 
think it did change over time. I just recalled another memory as well of the physiotherapy department on site because there used to be a very large physiotherapy department on site as well um, uh, because obviously as a self-contained hospital we provided all the different um, uh, types of, of treatments and therapies. You talked about optician and uh, physiotherapy was, was on site as well. I've got another question as well. <laughs> <laughs> when your grandmother worked there, did yes. she tell you about the operating theatres at all or, or not? Or? She, I can remember her telling me about, this, I was very young, um, but I can remember a couple of things. One was the uh, her telling me about how closely the beds were together in the wards. Um, so the ward she used to work on, which was um, a locked ward, um, in order to make the beds, you had to stand on the next bed. So they were so closely packed together that you literally walked from bed to bed. You couldn't walk around the beds. They were so packed together. So I can remember that one. Um, and then she also told me about what was then the deep insulin therapy, um, where, you, where in effect you put somebody into a coma and then out of a coma. And that was quite widely used when my grandmother worked there as well. And she used to say that that was one of the most frightening things that she did as part of her uh, part of her job, was that. Given the, the fact that the bears were so tightly packed together, do you think there was such a demand on, on places at St David's End? It was almost like the demand grew, perhaps, in, in time as mm. well, I wonder. I don't know. Yeah. Mm. I'm not sure about where the demand grew. I just think... Um, it was more it was more widely used back then for lots and lots of different reasons that weren't necessarily about mental illness per se at that time when you go back many years there was lots of other reasons that people were um, admitted into the hospital um, but certainly at that time when she worked there it was probably at the time when it was probably at a peak in terms of the number of patients that were on site. Um, so I think it was it was definitely trying to nurse as many people in a ward as, as possible at that time. 